God, God wants you to know that he is your source and your provider, okay? And so the opportunity here, when I walk through this acronym for HOPE, is first of all, why do I, how do I develop it? It's through embracing a relationship with Jesus Christ. First of all, heal it. This is the need for hope as well. If you will embrace hope, it will help you. To be able to propel forward in life, if you have no hope, life will appear dismal. If you don't wake up to the new mercies and recognize that today is a new day and God wants to do a new thing in your life and in my life. And if you wake up with the expectation, that's how you de develop hope is through expecting that God's word is true. The other opportunity, if you look at uh, Colossians 1, and 23. This one's really good, and I like it. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, hear what I'm saying. I'm saying we've got to study to show ourselves approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2.15. And what is Colossians, what Paul is saying right now? is once you study, allow that word to take root in your life. And if you look at Colossians 1.23, if you continue in the faith, you've got to be grounded and settled in it and be not a, removed away from hope of the gospel which you have heard. See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Understand this, my friend, without faith, it is impossible, absolutely impossible to please God. So we've got to develop our faith. And what we're reading in Colossians 1 and 23 is what Paul is saying is, is, is to make sure that we're not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you've heard. Because, and when and, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof it goes on to say Paul was made a minister. So what I said about faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord is so important that as much as possible, whether you play music and hear the word of truth via music, or if you study in your word, are you speaking to others, encouraging them in the word? That's a way to develop hope because the more that you encourage others, guess what? You are going to be encouraged as well. And so when we're talking about developing hope, I want you to see hope as a tool to help not only yourself, but others. They are people that need encouraging, that are in your space, that you'll have an opportunity to encourage them in the word. And guess what happens in your life? While you're encouraging others, you're going to be encouraged as well. So we're talking about developing hope today. One of the ways that we develop hope, my O is being open, being open open to receive the truth of God's word. Paul's told us we have to be grounded and settled. I can't express enough to you today about how essential God's word is to life and experiencing a successful life. Are any of you on the call at Facebook Live that had the opportunity to be present yesterday? for Take Charge Tuesday with Bernard Levitt. Was that just outstanding or what? It was just such a blessing for me to hear him talk about in the midst of the challenges of the pandemic, being that there 
his one of his businesses, one of the three businesses that he discussed with us on yesterday is Gregory B. Levin and Sons, which he's the vice president. And he said they experienced uh, success, unfortunately, as a result of the pandemic, but that's their business. But in addition to that, he talked about how he became a little bit, if you will, discouraged because, you know, so much was happening and he was seeking the Lord and asking him, you know, what would you have me to do? What is next for me? And, you know, when we get in those places, we've got to learn that it's God that we need to seek. But even when he stepped out there, long story short, I want to invite you to revisit the replay on that show for the fill in the blanks that I'm skipping over. But where I want to get to is that he got into a place where God said for him to go do something. And he did it and started that third business. But yet, once he started, there was an opportunity where Things did not work out. I think he said he had some eight employees and all but one left them. And he had invested in uh, having them trained, getting them certifications for the industry that they're in. But everybody left him except for the one. But the opportunity that I saw in listening to some of that replay last night with my husband is he had hope in God. See, one of the opportunities that often where hope is missed is when we place hope in other people. See, what we have to understand is God that called us to it, and it is God that will take us through it. You hear me saying that more often than not, but this year of elevation, elevation 2022, I want to encourage you, GCBN members, sponsors, and in our, com our community, please understand that it is God who is for you. So who can be against you? That's Romans 8.31. And so the opportunity there, sometimes people uh, will fail you and, and not intentionally. They don't mean to. They can't help it. You know, there are opportunities where circumstances allow, like today. I'm out here by myself, but I'm, 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 it's important to me for you. But the opportunity is if Lisa, Rich, or Pamela could be here, they would be out here with me. But what I want to say to you today is what's important there are people that are for you and want to support you, but sometimes God allows those people to not be present because he wants to see what you're going to do. Will you trust me? Yeah. Will you believe me? Will you do it afraid? Will you go outside your comfort zone and will you show up? Will you place your hope in me and allow me to show up for you and show and come through for you because that's what God wants to do. He wants to come through for you. And the way that you experience that, I know no one wants to hear this, but it is so important that we learn to wait. For my personal devotion this morning, you know, I'm always into Oswald Chambers. I can't find him right now. But the opportunity is this. I was reading the story in, in Genesis, and it was talking about what happens when we don't wait on God. It's the opportunity. God made a promise to Abraham, and he said that he would give him an heir. Well, if you go over to Genesis 16 chapter, you find out, although God spoke that, Abraham um, and Sarah got together and Sarah came up with another plan. Sometimes it's hard to develop hope because we come up with our own ideas of how to resolve situations when we're in a dark period of time, when we're in situations that appear hopeless, we say, well, then God's not speaking, so I need to take action myself. And we know the story of Ishmael. 
and how he came about because that's what happens when we move outside of, of God's when we're having hope in him, when he made a promise to us, but we're not experiencing the promise happening on our timeline. So the opportunity is to make sure we're open to hear what God says during those times that we're developing hope and we're waiting on God to move. One of the things that I wanted to mention is while I'm on the letter O as I walk through the acronym for HOPE, is to make sure when we're open that we're looking for opportunities where God wants to change the opposition. See, there's opposition in all of our lives. We, I don't know about you, let me say, I experience opposition every time I turn around. But what you have to, if you start viewing it as opposition, then there's no hope in that. What we have to do is to see the opposition as opportunities. What am I talking about? Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord and those that are called according to his purpose. Okay, so what are you talking about, Beth? If all things work together for my good, although I can't see it, I've got to be grounded and settled in the truth of God's word. Regardless of what I deem, if I look to my own understanding, as in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, that if my trust in the Lord, but yet I'm leading to my own understanding because the word says lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and then he'll redirect your path. But if I determine that, you know, God's not listening, he's uh, not tuned in to me, he's upset with me or any of those type things uh, that are untruth, then I might have a tendency to continuously view the opposition as opposition and fail to see that there's opportunities there. And what God wants us to know that although there's going to be weapons formed against us, the truth is they're not going to prosper. Don't focus on the weapons. Focus on God. Okay, okay. I'm not going to be long. Rich told me, don't be too long. Okay, I won't be. So my P, you probably already know what it is. It's pray and press. Yeah. To have hope and see it from a new perspective that quiet time that we learned over in Lamentations 3 and 26 is an opportunity for us to get in the presence of the Lord through prayer. And see, we learned, and I talked about this yesterday, James 5, 16, for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And one thing that I want to say to you that helps me to create greater hope in my life is the opportunity is to pray for others. If I concentrate a lot on me and, and the challenges that I may be experiencing in my life, then that's an opportunity where my hope level it's going to go probably down. The opportunity to build hope is to pray to God, our creator, who can do all things. Yeah, the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can endure this situation or this challenge. And I can hope 
and believe. They are, they're tied, tied so strongly together. If you believe the truth of how God feels about you, that he loves you, that he's created you in his image, and you embrace that, that within itself develops hope. Your belief in God. Okay, so I've got a couple other points here that I wanted to make. The press is in getting up every day believing that this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I can't tell you, honestly, I'm going to be very transparent with you this morning. My whole day has changed from when I hit the floor this morning. I knew it was an unusual day, but it's all good. And I was praying for Rich and I, and I'm going to use this as an example because we knew Pam was still in recovery. And I asked you guys at opening, hopefully you could hear that part, to pray for her and to pray for Lisa and Rich. But this morning I was praying for Rich and I on the show today and that God would use us. So then, like a little while ago, I received a text from Rich that he wouldn't be here today. In between all of that and studying for today, I made a phone call and learned some things that were displeasing uh, that I requested related to business. And I learned a lot of stuff that wasn't sitting well in my heart. And I would, knew it was the enemy standing in the way of your receiving this word today. But then I got a text from Rich and I know Rich, he's been on this platform previously when he's been ill. And I know Pamela and Lisa as well. If they could, they'd be here. But the opportunity was allowing me to see God move. Do you understand? Are you following me? Hopefully you are. The opportunity is what comes against you is going to come against you. Yeah, if God allows it. But your opportunity is to say, God, what would you have me to do as a result of this? Some things are outside of your control, but there are other things that are within your control. And God clearly pointed out to me, you've studied, you do it every week with people. Why can't you do it without people? And I got a piece about it. See, that's the thing that we have to understand that I'm driving, that if you have hope, you're going to have peace. And if you have peace, you're going to be productive in your life because with peace, I promise you, my friend, comes power. My peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. It was will to us. It's our inheritance. So when you walk in hope, an outcome is peace. That the attacks can't come against you. And you have an opportunity to experience greater elevation. This year, I'm so glad God allowed circumstances to work out the way that they did this morning so that I could come out here today to show you, to tell you that God is taking you higher in him, but you got to stop imagining that it's going to be all cream and smooth, that everything's gonna just work out perfectly. And that every day, although it brings new mercies, that you're going to just have, uh, as my late mom used to say, a flower bed of ease. No, no. A life full of hope will have challenges. So continue to develop hope. Listen, but the, the, the whole pleasure of the matter is to know that we've been begotten to a lively hope. 
So if your hope is dismal today, I pray that you will receive a charge to know that circumstances do not write your hope. God has written the hope that he has prescribed. He says he's begotten us to a hope. And that was in 1 Peter 1. I didn't read that. Did I read that? 1 Peter? Let me read 1 Peter 1 to you. Because we're being, we're, we're begotten to a hope. And if we will understand and embrace the hope that God has called us to, then we can walk in it. Let me read this to you. Oh, I love it. I'm glad I turned to it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, remember I told you new mercies every day, this is so good, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I so love the Lord in his word. He said, that he has begotten us again unto a lively hope. And God wants us to experience this hope, but it comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So how do I develop this hope? First opportunity, if I don't know him as my personal Lord and Savior, is to embrace that. First of all, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Next is to understand that according to his abundant mercy, the new mercy that I talked about that he gives us every day, that's our assurance. And when you're grounded and settled in that, then what you're going to know is you're going to understand, oh, I got to say it that God has a plan and you are a part of it. And it's not that his plan is gonna always be that the temperature is warm. Sometimes there's gonna be some cold days and that gives us the opportunity to have a fire in the fireplace or snuggle up with a nice blanket and a good book, a good read. So what am I saying to you today? To experience and develop hope, you got to learn how to execute. Yeah, I promise you, I already had the acronym prior to all of this planning out the way it did today. The opportunity here this morning that I want to say to you is hope in God. When you execute, you've got to move towards what God is saying in the truth or towards the thing that you're hoping for. If you're hoping for, uh-oh, if you're hoping for God to do a great thing in your life, then you've got to move towards the thing that you're hoping for. If God's giving you a vision for uh, business ownership or promotion on your job or new home, whatever it is that you're hoping for, the opportunity is to move towards that. Keep hoping. I was going to talk about Shawshank Redemption today, and I watched a little bit of it last night, but I'm not going to go that direction right now. Maybe the next time we have um, the full platform, we'll revisit that. But one of the things, the reason I'm mentioning it to you is I want to encourage you. If you get a chance and you can get past, uh, there's some profanity, a little bit of nudity. It's a great, it's, and I'm just going to tell you, it's my favorite movie ever because I learned so much. But if, if it's going to offend you, please say, you know, and you can judge me if you want to, because I learned something new every time I watch that movie. And so I want to show you how hope can work in the 
the hopelessness, hope when there's hopelessness is what I'm trying to say to you. Hope will benefit if you allow God to develop hope through you. So the execute piece that I wanted to read to you, and I want to read uh, from Titus as well. See, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. See, that's the hope that God is speaking to us today. We've got to understand that hope comes from God. The devil's not going to tell you to have hope. The, t- the devil, if it's something that say, oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, that'll never happen. Oh, that's not for you. Oh, you're not going to do that. Or they're not going to like you. Or you're not going to receive that opportunity. That is of the enemy. The reason we position hope this year to come behind, um, uh, to, to be Wellness Wednesday coming behind Take Charge Tuesday is because as we continue to elevate in our lives, the enemy doesn't like that. And he's going to be attacking you, looking for opportunities to say, this isn't the year of elevation. You're not going to, you're going to do just like you did last year, or you're going to probably do even worse. But what God is saying to you today, and we strategically aligned Wellness Wednesday to follow our powerful Take Charge Tuesday platform presenters so that you could be encouraged to understand and to look out for the opportunities to challenge your hope and then that you can guard it and understand that God is created within you opportunities for greater and that is your hope. So execute and move towards the hope that God has assigned for you. Today, thank you so much for those that may have joined on Facebook. I don't know if anyone's over there really because I've got enough on my hands to focus with here. I apologize for the technology challenges, my phone falling and all of the others. But I hope you in all of this were able to Understand that there is nothing greater. I love it. Let me say it like this. Now abideth faith, hope, love. The greatest is love, but hope made it in the top three. And so please understand, do not allow anyone to take away your hope. Kim, thank you for joining me here on Zoom. It sure makes it cozy for me. The name of the movie, Shawshank Redemption. Tim Robbins, my favorite, and uh, oh, another favorite, Morgan Freeman is the name of the movie she's asking. Um, But this is good. If you have any questions that I may have missed, please forgive me. Uh, Let me just check something real quick. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, we're, sounds like we're good. But I want to tell you again, thank you for joining us. Join us on Friday at noon for our Friday noon nugget. Also, a great opportunity next week. Please, 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 if you're available on uh, Tuesday at noon, join us. Crystal Parker out of uh, Central Florida, Christian Chamber of Commerce is going to be our guest. I can't wait to talk with her on Tuesday, Take Charge Tuesday Power Call. She's going to talk about some great opportunities for elevation. And another thing that I'm noticing about our guest presenters on the Take Charge Tuesday platform are talking about diversifying and looking for business, new streams of income and revenue and to grow your business. So like Bernard on yesterday, and then here she comes. I'm sure she's going to share some of her ventures that she's working on. Also on Wednesday, we'll be back uh, wellness uh, on Wellness Wednesday. Uh, Karen Harrison is going to have help us with hope for our health. 
She is outstanding um, to share with us. Thank you, Kim. She's outstanding to share with us about our health this year. And the reason that uh, the Lord just laid it on my heart to align her, to follow uh, our first three messages on hope, to come back with our health, because really as business owners and as Georgia Christian Business Network uh, focus, we look at the holistic approach to an individual. And this year, as we embrace elevation, we can no longer uh, cover up hope, uh, excuse me, our, our physical and the wellness. Although we talk on Wellness Wednesday about a lot of opportunities, we're going to get healthier. We're going to get fit. So hope for your health is next Wednesday with Karen Harrison. Okay, thank you guys for joining us. Visit our website, uh, gcbnetwork.com. I'm looking forward to having you guys uh, to become a member of our great network, our sponsor even. Uh, we so appreciate you. This is a year of elevation, and I want to continue to define elevation for you, that we're embracing a continual ascension in your mind and aligning your feet to follow that path. Listen, I'm Beth Copeland, the Executive Director of Georgia Christian Business Network. God has a plan and you are a part of it. So build your hope in him and nothing less than Jesus Christ, his righteousness. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the remainder of your afternoon. God bless you. Bye-bye now.